Hello and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explorer we're going to continue to look at the texture actives as a way to bring the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework into 3.js. So let's uh, take a look at Zim, zimjs.com and we will find those texture actives examples. You can go to Zim015 to see what's new or hit the what's new or you can find them in the code section here under libraries. So down under libraries, this is where we have sockets in the game libraries, physics, and 3JS work as well. The Zim3 module helps with that. So if you pop in here, here's the texture active examples. We've already done bubblings on this set, and we did another bubbling on this set, and then we did a bubbling on the code here. So that's a good place to start if you haven't seen any of these videos on texture actives. Probably go look at those bubblings. The Explorer videos are a bit longer in depth, and uh, we concentrate on almost everything in the code. We've already done an Explorer on this one. We've done an Explorer on this one, and now we're doing an Explorer on the physics one right there. So that's physics. He had it's on a texture. Wow. Cool, huh? <laughs> Isn't that neat? Wow. And you don't need to put it on all of those materials. Um, the, the box here can have different materials. However, there is a, a limit um, due to the fact that we can have one physics world. So it can go on as many textures as you want. It's just you can't have a physics world on this texture and a different physics world on that one, currently anyway. Um, okay, so that's great. Shall we go take a look at the code and see how we did that? F11, bring that back down and pop on into the code here. So this we're using Zim015. We're bringing in Zim3. And that, that has the 3JS module, or the 3JS um, yeah, module R155 along with the orbit controls, first person controls, and GLTF loader sort of you know, bundled there together because we use that those guys a lot. However, you can use your own set of 3JS stuff. Uh, we have over here an example of how you would do that in the raw. So here are the, the ones that we're looking at, texture active, texture active two, three, four, and five, and then we've got a HUD, HUD version. Um, we're doing um, videos on those. The Texture Active Raw has th raw 3JS stuff in it. So we come up here. This is importing the specific 3JS in the orbit control. So you can do it this way too with your own 3JS things. At which point you just bring in Zim. Okay, 015 Zim. This will bring it all. We're also bringing in Zim Physics so that we have physics as well. And you just don't, you want a different namespace there. We don't even really use the namespaces. Uh, so we're good. And don't worry about any duplications. The module system will work that out. So it'll say, hey, we're supposed to be bringing in CreateJS and Zim. Oh, but we already have it. So we won't do it again. When our, uh, there's our frame, when our frame is ready, we carry on and we've got some good comments here about the texture active world and if you're working with texture actives you should read all of those here's the logo texture active and we're running make logo uh, fr right from the texture active class so this is a static method we're scaling that to our logo here and positioning it and setting it so that when we tap when we tap, we're using a short little zgo. So Zim's got these short little functions, global functions that help us. Zog is another one. Zog, <laughs> a reworking of that. Zog will console.log. And if you're on the HTML side, Zid will do a document.getElement by ID, etc. But whatever. So that's that means if we click on this logo right there, it goes to Zim in a, in a blank target. In some of the other ones, we have made it so that when you click on this logo, it toggles between Zim. And you can see that when I press the T key, I'm pressing the T key here, the letter T, and nothing's toggling. 
We've turned that off, whereas in the other ones it was turned on. Well, let me just show you why. So we'll come on down here. When we make our texture actives, plural, uh, that, hand, that sort of organizes all of our texture active objects, we are given a manager by default because it may be that we have to make multiple texture actives if we have different cameras. So for every camera, you've got to have a different texture actives. Uh, because the the um, it's called the ray casting is coming from the camera view. So yet we need to tile all of the texture actives need to be tiled in Zim so that when we press on them they don't interfere with one another, and therefore we needed a manager that handles the tiling across multiple texture actives, and that's where it happens to be the toggle key is there too. So the texture actives dot manager we can access its toggle key and set it to minus one or indeed we could have passed in that as a parameter of the texture actives and it would pass along to the manager that we don't want a toggle key let's uh, comment that out though so we comment that out that means we will have a toggle key here oh if we're looking at the this version open default browser let me get rid of the live version so here we are and i hit the t key t and this toggles to the actual Zim. So that's what that looks like in Zim. We're going to see how we made that physics stuff. But at the moment, there, there she be. The reason why we didn't toggle here, and there's the other texture active here, is if we slide like that, the physics world is kind of stuck. So the physics world is stuck at zero, zero uh, for box 2D to work. All right. Um, we could get away with uh, fixing that, I suppose. If we detect physics, we can just slide the whole stage. And as long as the stage is at zero, zero, the physics works. And that's that's actually how we, we, we can make it so that the physics world is bigger than the stage and we can scroll across it. And it's not really, it's not bigger than the stage, sorry, it's bigger than the screen. And then we're actually scrolling the whole, what we call the stage, that's our base container. Um, so yeah, I suppose we could do that. So we could make it, and as we do this, the whole stage moves. Yeah, uh, that would work as well, I think. Right now, though, the tile that this stuff is in is moving. So right now, uh, Texture Actives tiles this on the stage, and this is moving the tile, leaving the stage where it is. But that doesn't work very well with our physics. It's another reason why we only have one physics world as well, is because if we had more, I'm not sure what happens if they overlap on one another, then the, the ray casting would be hitting the overlap. Yeah, so um, at the moment, it's possible that you could have the, uh, compartmentalize. Right now, we you see how we've got it hitting the border here? Well, we could have made the border smaller and had a little physics world in here, or a little physics thing here, and another physics thing going here. Then on your textures, you would have to divide up your text this um, texture, I guess, uh, so that it only shows certain parts of it on the map. Okay, which I think is possible. And certainly if you know what you're doing in 3JS and 3D, I think you could be able to do that. And that would allow you to have different physics stuff happening on, uh, on different textures. Okay. Well, let's leave it at that, shall we? And I hit the T key, and then we're back in here. But note that that is live. We got a little red ball in the corner here. We got an orange ball in the corner there. And if I hit T, we got an orange orange ball right here and a red one there. Now let's put a blue one over here. Whee! Okay, and we hit T to come back again. There's our blue one right there. So these these are actually mapped. Another thing to note here with the physics is when I press on the box, I'm not using orbit zoom. We're going to see why that is in just a sec. The Well, I'll tell you why it is. The, why it is is because as I drag my mouse, I'm pressing down right now. And as I drag across these things, if I'm pressing down, it treats it as uh, activating those things. That's, that's kind of handy. It's almost like having a hand and you sweep things in the physics world. So we've left it like that. Uh, it's if, different than dragging things in Zim, just plain Zim. And if plain Zim, if you press down here and move across something, it doesn't start dragging it. But in the physics world, it makes sense. And that's how Box2D has traditionally done it. Box2D is our physics engine that we're using. It's all integrated into Zim. As a matter of fact, why don't we go take a, a bit of a peek about 
at some physics examples. Okay, so going off to Zim, Badoop. And if we go under examples here, you could do a search on physics, but under collection, there's actually a collection of the Zim 10 physics right here, physics. Whoa, okay. Then we have uh, a goal where we can spin this thing and try and score a goal. Oh, we scored a goal, so that's checking for contact. This one has what's called a low linear damping. So it moves, this one moves really quickly and slides for a long time. This one doesn't. So I'm throwing that and it's not even moving. So it's got lots of damping, but it has very low angular damping. Okay, so you can set those kinds of things in your physics. <laughs> you can also set the bounciness of stuff. So that's that example. Uh, beads, uh, beads, here's beads, whoosh. So there's what we mean by sort of sweeping across like that. And here's a keep it up game. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bong. So it's counting how many times we kept it up. Oh, boo. Bing, bing. And the last one is a drive example. This is an example of where we're moving the physics world, uh, the whole stage. So this is now the edge of this. Mm, yeah, the edge of the stage. It started off moves so the stage was way in the middle and the idea here is we're zipping along with the keyboard and trying to turn off all of the computer chips bump 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 okay so those are some examples of physics we do have some examples of physics games here as well like there's pretty serious alone droids where we're doing all sorts of jumping and I press that Leaderboard, city sleeps, turn off energy ports. Okay. Oh, I missed jump. Bum, bum, bum. And we're, we're trying to avoid those, uh, the neon bits there. Woohoo! All right, you get the idea. So that's um, more Zim Physics type stuff. And you can have that on your textures. Wow. All right, back into the code then. <laughs> have we even started in the code? I can't, I, I can't even remember where we were in the code. What did we, we, we jumped down uh, below. Was this an explore? We have seen the logo. I think we got that far, didn't we? Okay, so here's the physics. Wow. We're making a texture active uh, that will be 800 by 800 purple borders. There's the border size, 50. So that's the border width, because we don't want the balls to, uh, we've got a boundary set up in physics, so I'll, I'll get there. And we're setting the backing orbit to false. Remember, we wanted to turn that to false, because here's what would happen if, uh, you know, the, the, as, as I mentioned here, here's what would happen if we did the, now we can swipe that thing, but watch what happens. As I'm swiping, my mouse is hitting and catching on the balls as I swipe. Sort of looks like I'm shaking it, which is a neat effect, but it doesn't always happen. And so people would shake it and go, why isn't it shaking now? Because it's not really intended to do that. But if it happens to bypass a ball, then it does. So that was glitchy. In other words, we, we thought we'd turn that off. And that looked kind of glitchy. So we turned the backing orbit off, which means we can't use the orbit zoom on that. Okay. Here's physics. We make a new physics. Yay! And we've got the gravity at zero. So if the gravity is at 10, here's what that would look like. All those little balls would fall to the ground. Oh! Now that looks a bit odd, though, if you're upside down. <laughs> it's like, whoa, okay, so it's not, you know, it's a little tricky. You could, instead of gravity, you can always apply a force, like an ongoing force. This, uh, what, we're, what we're applying here, as you're about to see, is an impulse. So there's both impulse and force. Impulse is a one-time, like, bang, a pool cue shot. Whereas force is a constant force, like gravity, and needs to be applied in a ticker of some sort or in the uh, in your render engine, that, that type of thing. We have um, a ticker, ticker.add, and we can apply 
things constantly in the ticker. Uh, so what am I getting at here? Yeah, I mean, gra gra you could apply a force in uh, the direction of the camera, kind of, so that it always seems like uh, the balls are falling properly, but that would be you coding, stuff like that. So there we are setting physics to zero. Uh, obviously, it would work if you put it on a wall and you weren't spinning the camera around, you were in third person or something, and then you, know, you got some physics on the wall. It's not gravity would look fine there because it'd be pointing down. But when you can spin the when you can spin the box around, gravity is a little bit awkward, perhaps. <laughs> okay, so we we for this demonstration we turned it off at zero. Here are the boundaries, and what we've got is if we don't have the boundaries, then the stage is the boundary, which might appear to be a bit strange. So now these things are, this is the stage basically, the top left corner. Well, actually, yeah, I guess the top left corner. And then off here is more stage. And we could just throw these off the stage and some of them bounce back. <laughs> so the stage is kind of like here or something and same, oh, down below, I guess the stage is ending sooner than we expected. Um, okay, so we have set the boundaries to be B, which is the border width, 50. Another border width. Ah, right, because look at the height on that. The height is 800, but our stage is only 768. <laughs> okay, so we've made, made a box that's big. Probably shouldn't have done that. We could, could have easily made the box 600 by 600, and it would have been all on the stage to start. Um, but anyway, we've specified the boundaries to be uh, B and B in on the X and Y, and then a width of the ball's width, so that's the whole width, minus two times the boundary, or border. Uh, yeah, no, boundary, border. Got a lot of Bs going on here. All right, doesn't that make sense? And that, that boundary can be bigger than than the stage or bigger than what you're viewing and that way you can throw things up in the air and then they fall down into view that's fine or you could bring up the floor like uh, so it can be smaller than your view and you can bring up the floor and have it bounce off you know see where it's bouncing uh, we're turning the physics drag on that lets us drag everything and you can put exceptions of what you want to drag in there no i think it's um, the other way around if you start putting things inside here then we'll drag only those things. But if you just say drag, it drags everything. Except if stuff is, um, there's both dynamic, that means it can move, and then there's static, or not dynamic. And the, the static stuff can't be dragged, and it doesn't move. I'll show you an example of that if you want. But let's take a look at our loop. We're looping 10 times, calling this arrow function. And every time we're making a circle that has a min and a max radius of that, and it will pull randomly from those colors. These are called ZIMV values. They're not as important when you're actually doing a loop like this because we could have just said rand 30, 60, and that would have been the same thing. This would have been a little trickier. We could have plucked from that array. So uh, that would be pluck, P-L-U-C-K, and that would pluck randomly from the array each time or put that up above, you know, and you, you know how to get something random from an array, but we were, it's so annoying doing that that we just made a quick function called pluck that plucks from it. Uh, by the way, that will possibly repeat where this one won't, false. And there's also ways to uh, pluck them all and then start again. But anyway, we made zim v values, which are, well, are very important and powerful because maybe we're not looping maybe we're just making a new tile new tile and if we do a new tile like that and whatever the tile parameters are what would happen is if we random if we just did rand and that's a helper function too to do random between two values if we did rand it would do that before it makes the tile and say it chose 40 then you would end up tiling circles that were all 40. Or maybe it choose, chose 32, then you would end up tiling circles that are all 32. So that's not what we want. And we realize that oh, 
you know, that's unfortunate. How can we fix that? And the way we fixed it is we said, all right, let's make this thing called ZimV values. It's a pick dynamic parameters. And if we pass in uh, a min and a max, then what will happen is in the tile, every time it makes a circle, it will pick between that min and max. Yay, that's what we wanted. And every time it makes a circle, it will pick from this array. So that's another format. So one format is a min max. Another format is an array where it picks randomly. We could also tile a series. And a series tiles those things in order. So it would go, uh, the first, first circle made would be red, then green, then blue, orange, yellow, pink. Then it would go back to red, green, blue, yeah, et cetera. And we can bounce the series, we can reverse the series, we can go every double, we can, et cetera. There's all sorts of um, cool things that you can do with series. Isn't that neat? And that is very, very powerful. If you want to find out more about the Zim V values, uh, I've got an extra bracket somewhere. I don't even want to tile, that's why. I'm making a new circle. That looks pretty good. If you want to find out more about the Zim V values, you would go to the Zim site. And hit the docs as one place and go pick or V, uh, pick or V. There's pick and here are the formats of it. So it picks randomly from an array. Excuse me. It uh, picks from a range, it picks from a series and there, like I said, all sorts of series. It also can pick from the results of a function and just normal numbers, but it's also a combination. So it's a recursive, go as deep as you want. So this will pick randomly between this and 30 and 40. And if it happens to pick this, then it will be a minimum between that and that. Also, if you go to the Zim site and hit the gold bars, gold bars, you'll come into where it's got the tips, tips. And there, here are all sorts of exciting things about Zim. There's a glossary of terms that we use, including Zim V, which was invented, by the way, in Zim version V, which is five, the five, version five of Zim. And dynamic is, uh, talks about that. So there's more dynamics there. There's probably also all sorts of videos helping you out with that as well. Okay. So we're making a new circle. We're centering it on uh, balls. Balls is our texture active here. We're adding physics. There you go. If we didn't loop, there's a circle. Um, we're centering it on balls. Let's not even do a force. And we won't change the bounciness. And we won't uh, do that. We'll just make it 50 and we'll make it red. Red a uh, new circle, center it on the stage, or on balls in this case, add physics. Ready? Bum, bum, bum. Refresh. One red circle, not very bouncy. <laughs> Boing. Almost like, not bouncy at all. Okay, so by default, stuff isn't bouncy. We're going directly to the bounciness. It used to be... <laughs> It used to be, what was it? Oh, it was an awful parameter name for that. Restitution. Restitution. And the higher the restitution, the less it rested. The lower the restitution, the more it rested. And I was like, that sounds wrong. So we just uh, changed the name of it. So in Box2D, it's restitution. That still works, but here is bounciness. If we have a bounciness of one, that is darn bouncy. And this thing will bounce all over the place. Ready? Aim, fire, boing, boing. Actually, if you keep on increasing that, it'll just go boing, 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 <laughs> be, be a perpetual motion machine. We have perpetual motion, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all right. Anyway, that's the bounciness. So isn't that cool? That's very simple physics. Amazing. As a matter of fact, if you didn't have physics, it would still do it because it would just make a default physics for you. That was what we did in Zim 10. We integrated the box 2D. It used to be more of a helper library and you do everything on the helper library and you uh, kind of map them. 
but uh, now it's all that's all integrated. It was a big change in Zim version 10. So we are looping. We're adding physics, adding the bounciness of 0.8, and we're doing an impulse, randomly that much and randomly this much. And that gives us a bunch of balls that start in the same place and sort of shoot out <laughs> once we save it. And if we save it, that gives us a bunch of balls that start in the same place and shoot out a little bit. We could make them shoot more if we wanted to. But uh, I liked I liked that. I thought it was cool. <clears throat> There's our physics. Woo! Let's go to the 3JS side now. So down in the 3JS side, we're calling the, the Zim help 3 helper. We're pulling the camera back a little bit and up a little bit. If we didn't pull it up a little bit, the reason we pulled it up a bit is that uh, it would normally look like that. And the texture active is in behind there, but you can't see it. So that's sort of straight on. So we pulled the camera up a little bit so that we could see the texture active above it. We could have done this, but we liked the idea of, it looks just like normal physics stuff there, but ah, the reveal. It's like, oh my God, it's on all, all the sides. Unbelievable, wow. Or at least that's how I feel. <laughs> We're doing a skybox and there we are doing the traditional 3JS stuff to, to get in um, a, texture and a geometry and a mesh and then we're bringing those things together oh sorry a material and then bringing those together in a mesh and adding it to the scene here's our orbit controls that come with the zim 3 import and then the texture active work so new texture actives I'll turn that back on new texture actives did i show you i can't remember if i did show you how how else we could turn that off. We could pass it in as a parameter here. But if you want to know what these parameters are, I'll show you in the docs in just a sec. So in new texture actives, we pass in our texture active objects, which happen to be balls and logo. There's our three namespace, our helper module namespace, the renderer, the scene, the camera, and the controls. And then this is the layer that we want the ray casting to happen on. So we don't want to necessarily ray cast all of the 3D scene, all of the 3JS scene if we, for our uh, texture actives. If we can put them all in the same layer, then we can ray cast that layer. That's optional. You can leave that off, in which case it will ray cast everything. And we'll see how that hooks up in just a sec. So let me show you where the parameters for this are aside from right here. <laughs> uh, if we go to the docs, it's the tips, top docs, and type in texture act A. So this is texture active. Be careful because there's a texture active. This is us preparing uh, whatever we want for the, uh, to be mapped. But then down below, or hit, go again is texture actives plural so singular plural and the plural here are the parameters you can read about the parameters right here and you can find the methods and the properties one of those properties is the manager And there we are using the manager to turn the toggle key off. Another of those texture actives is the, or sorry, <laughs> another of those parameters is the toggle key. So there it is just after an ignore list. Right there. The near and far, so layers, the near, the far. I don't think we did anything with near and far in this case. The ignore list and the toggle key. So rather than go null, 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 and then um, minus one here, which we could have done, we decided just to use show you that it has a property as well and that you can change the toggle key. Why are we changing it to a lowercase o? Oh yeah, that's right, lowercase o. Here we are making the logo at the top, three dot make panel. That logo is just on a, a, on a plane. That means we can use the make panel. If we want mesh basic material in a, a plane, that's your average interface panel kind of thing. We have make panel comes from our three helper module. And we say that 
the texture active that goes on that is logo and that we want um, that to operate with the texture actives here. That will do these steps down below. Uh, we're adding it to the scene and moving it back a bit and up a bit. This is the cube. So the cube is not a plane, therefore we don't use make panel on it. And we're back to just raw 3JS, making the box geometry a canvas texture, where we pass in the canvas of our texture active. So the texture active is a Zim object. We don't want to pass the Zim object to the canvas texture. We want to pass the canvas of the Zim object. So that, what, what's happening in the texture active system is normally Zim doesn't constantly cache something and get a canvas, uh, individual canvas, it's called a cache canvas in Zim, it doesn't get that cache canvas all the time. Uh, caching is helpful if it's never going to change and we want, you know, we need some performance or whatever, uh, we might cache some, some, a bunch of labels or whatever. Uh, for the most part, we never have to do that. Uh, performance is good enough that we don't really need to to cache unless we're making thousands of things. So Zim is not really used a lot for making thousands of things. It can. We can have a stage GL, which is a web GPU kind of thing. Or actually web, G, no, web GL, I guess. Web GPU, yeah. But um, we can do that. But for the most part, we don't need to. And we like the, the ease of not caching everything. If, you're not, if you don't have to cache everything, that means it's just a little bit easier. Uh, not everything needs to be a bitmap. For instance, you can keep things as vector and they scale really nicely and they're totally crisp, retina crisp and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's much easier. So here in this system, we are constantly caching animated things. That is, if it's animated and if it's interactive, then we're caching. And we get a cache canvas and this allows that to be mapped. So our, our cache canvas, which we've now stored. If you're from Zim, you know about the cache canvas property, but when we wanted the rest of the world to see what we we're doing, it was sort of like, hey, no, cache canvas is a bit of a you know, surprising name for it. It's a little complex and scary sounding maybe. I don't know. Let's just call it the canvas property of it. So we changed it so that the texture active has a canvas property, and here we are passing that canvas to the canvas texture. We're then uh, making a material. We're, we're mapping that texture to the material. And then we're meshing those two things together to get our mesh. This thing makes a mesh, but here we had to do those steps to get the mesh. We're adding it to the scene. Uh, and here we've got one more step that this guy does, but here it doesn't. And that is we have to tell the texture actives to add the cube mesh. The mesh that we just made, we have to add it to our texture actives. And we have to tell it which layer our texture actives is operating on. Which, now that I look at it, uh, might be... So here we do it automatically. We say, hey, this is the texture actives. We can look at that and know what, what layer it's turned on. We could have done that automatically here, but maybe the point is you might possibly want to be using multiple layers. You can actually pass different layers into the texture actives. And so if you needed to turn on and off layers for any reason, you might want to use different layers. And so perhaps we left it off rather than be automatic. We left it out anyway, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's no big deal. Okay, so that's the add mesh method of texture actives. Please be careful when you do a search here in the docs. If we were to search for add mesh, not there, even if it were uh, the case. Because our methods, these things right here are not methods, those are classes, and they're searchable. The only uh, ex ex exemption to that, I guess, are all of the, the Zim fourth methods. So every display object in Zim has all of these methods right here. Right? So those are out here on the object. Those are searchable because they're listed here. But all of the classes, those are classes. All of our components up here, these are classes. If you open these up, they've got a bunch of uh, parameters, methods here, and properties. These methods are not searchable with this search thing here. So that's why we can't find that. We have to know that, oh, that's part of texture active. 
active or whatever. So that's the manager. Here's the texture active and we scroll on down and here's where you find the methods. Oh, that was, was that texture active plural? <laughs> no, uh, yes, that's right. So I'm looking for the plural. So I'll watch that. Here's the plural, there's plural. And we scroll on down and get the methods add mesh right there. If you really wanted to look at everything on the Zim docs, you can go to the text version and do a control F. Uh, what was it? Add mesh like that. And there's um, the occurrences of the add mesh throughout here. Okay, so that's a full text search option, I suppose. But we find it quite handy that we <laughs> avoid that. Imagine searching for center and almost every display object has center in there and you just be, ah, this one's got it, this one's got it, this one's got it, you know, it's blah. So um, that's the reasoning uh, behind that. Cool, huh? So where are we now? We're back in here. We just did the add mesh and the last thing in here, yay, so that's it. We, we brought in our three stuff. That's our, our scene, our camera, and our render. We made a skybox. We added some controls. We made a texture actives, plural. We made a panel that it's the logo. We made a, um, a box and that's mapped to our texture actives right there. This is a throttle for older Androids on, you know, like first generation Samsung tabs or something, Galaxy tabs, maybe. Uh, we found that if it starts bogging like that, that it can get pretty boggy. So if its frame rate is too low, then we'll just start it off low and uh, it's fine. It looks pretty decent. And on any newer machines, even like I, I've got a five-year-old iPad, my wife's five-year-old iPad that I test on, and it's smooth as butter on there. So really happy with the performance of that. And that is great. What do you think? Yeah, isn't that cool? So once again, just um, as a as a bit of an explore, ooh, it's just a bit of an explore here. Let's kind of think about what other kind of things we could put on here. And we're going to do a few introductory videos. They haven't been done yet. I'm waiting to get all the Explorer ones done before we do some sort of more promotional, uh, inspirational videos about what kind of things we can do. But let me take you through to, to Zim. And how about we look at the dev site? Uh, maybe that you're coming from a 3JS world. You might be used to the dev site, like with Node and all that. We have that too in Zim. So here uh, is Zim going into Svelte and React and Angular and Vue with Node Package Manager. And you can do all that kind of stuff as well in your environment if you're, if you're used to that. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was this was for developers to see what kind of things we could insert into their Canvas apps. Okay. I stop. <laughs> uh, here are components. So why don't I just take you through their little arrows. I'll just quickly take you through all these and it'll give you an idea of the types of things that could be put on textures inside of 3JS is either elements and we've got uh, we've got some HUD elements coming up that we'll show you but it could be on menu panels or it could be right on walls of things or even uh, on you know somebody's wrist in a model. Uh, imagine this on a, on a model, like on an arm that you're looking at. That would be really cool. Here is one of these things you would find on your television. Uh, this is a radial menu. Wow, a radial menu. You don't see those every day. Uh, we did already one on... Mm, yum, I made that pizza. Mm, okay, anyway, uh, a puzzle like that. And where were we here? This is a label on a path. You don't get that every day. I mean, we've seen these kinds of things in Photoshop, but this is for the end user inside of Zim. We have these interactive paths, which uh, actually there's shapes. Um, here's some examples of the interactive paths. So this is a blob and these things all change. So there's different ways that you can do the strokes. Um, this guy is a, what's that called? A list. Back to the dial, so some examples of components. That was, I don't know, one fiftieth of what 
is available and exciting sort of component type stuff. Over here, you've got drags and drops within bounds. Hit test to find out if things are hitting. Transforms. Whee! So this could be on your wall or surface. Animations. Uh, Zim's got an amazing animation engine, just, just like um, Greensock, for instance. Uh, it's as powerful. We can do even more things. Uh, Greensock has a few uh, bonuses, and we've got a few bonuses that are different. Zim Duo technique, very easy to work with Zim because we have uh, parameters individually or as a configuration object, much like um, Python has. Styling on parameters, so there we've styled the parameters or uh, the components to look. So we've got style on the canvas. Wow, and chaining. Almost everything is chained. Dynamic parameters we mentioned. So there's randomly we're making a tile out of those multiple colors. You you know how to do that now. Yeah, you can hit the code here as well and see see any of that. These are sprites. So sprites are animated thing, and this is animating at a different speed based on my mouse. You can do that too on your walls. Here's a motion controller. We've got something following my cursor. And I press it and it stops following. I press it again and it starts following. Particle emitters. A pen. And this is a customized pen that you can do all sorts of beautiful things. And it's damping is not very good at the moment. Parallax. I don't know. We're in 3JS. We don't need parallax. <laughs> but it's, it's parallax animating to noise. Uh, layouts, so that's sort of like a flex box kind of stuff. I don't know if that would relate to what you're needing. This is generative art, so we have a, do a lot of generative art, and I always wanted that to be interactive. We were making interactive NFTs and showing those in virtual reality at the Pagoda Scope and other places, Prompt Gallery and Noticed Colony. And I always wanted those walls to be interactive. Now they'll be able to be interactive inside of 3JS and A-Frame and Banter, for instance. So I'm looking forward to exploring that further, and that's what some of the promotional videos will be about. Zim is very complete, so here are developers, and we don't necessarily cater to developers. We're also for kids. Uh, it's so easy. We have a lot of Flash developers um, making e-learning apps and things like that around the world, but uh, here's what they're saying about Zim. And our Zim is so simple. Like, your developer systems are... I would say complex. Once you learn them, they're great. But for us, we start with this. We hit copy. That copies this code right here. Sit that code into a text editor, save it, and run it. That's it. It's just one import. There we go. <laughs> bam. Bum, bum, bum. But anyway, why, why did I get there? We were looking at the, the devs here. There was something I was going to tell you about that scrolling yeah so it's uh good for single page apps they're often called pwas uh, model view controller we can do too and we can bring all those things in here's a bunch of helper libraries and, and things that we've seen here's our node package manager here's our versions so we've gone through a lot of versions with a lot of exciting things. You might like the look of a book. So this is the Zim book where you can turn the pages. This also can be on a wall or on anything. Is that neat? That's a video. Um, we've already got people using videos inside of Zim, inside of 3JS. I know you can have a video texture, but uh, that's what we do too in Zim. Hey, and there's Dr. Abstract. That's me. There's my wife. Hey, stop looking at my wife. Hey, oh, stop looking at my guru robe. <laughs> anyway, um, this book is an example of something that could be done in 3JS. I teach Sheridan Interactive Media. We've got uh, probably got some openings for this September. Come on in. Love to teach you. Uh, what's that? What's happening there? But isn't that good? Oh, yeah, there's all sorts of things with um, Zim that you can do. The, if you want to learn that, what you would do is go to the Learn section here. The editor is a great place to start. We've just launched the editor in the last version of Zim, Zim 014. Uh, the editor has all sorts of examples right here called Zaps. And 
those are the features of Zim, any of the features, Zaps. And you press on any of these, there's transform handles, so we, we saw that already. But you can see the code behind that, which is just a new rectangle, dot center, dot transform. You can bring that code on over into here and make changes to it, red. And now it's red. See the difference? It's blue on this side, test, it's red. So this is you editing on this side. And back in the zaps, there's uh, mid mid level ones. The, the the previous one was basics. There's advanced levels. Like I said, we just started this uh, a couple months ago, and we've already filled it up with this many examples, and we'll continue to fill it up with more. You can log in and save files and share lists of files. So if you're an educator, you can then um, teach with those lists of files right here and have all the students not even have to get an editor. They're all just kind of learning right here in the Zim editor. That's available right here. But, oh, back in the learn though. So the editor is a great place to learn. Just a little bit about the canvas. In the videos, this one right here, the Zim Basic series is probably the best for you guys if you're coming in from 3JS and want to know more about Zim. The Zim Basics take you through all of the Zim Basics. Whereas the creative coding with uh, learn JavaScript is how to learn JavaScript. So if you don't know JavaScript yet, that's a good place to start. It's a bit older. This one's fairly current. You might want to look at that. Here we've been doing the Explorer videos. You're in one. Wow, how about that? And if you want to just get a sense of how quickly we can build things with Zim and the types of things we can build, there's a whole Code in 5 Minutes series. So have a look through there. And if you like something, give it a thumbs up. That's always helpful. And maybe even a comment. Love to have you there. We mentioned Flash. I've been doing this in Flash. I was doing it in Director before that time. We've honed our system. We've made it over the very many years. It's all quite similar. We've honed it. And we're excellent at making uh, interactive media. All right? Here's a bunch of tutorials to get Zim to work in Animate, because Animate exports to CreateJS, which is what Zim's built on. So uh, yay, CreateJS. And that's that. Code pen, creative coding. We mentioned creative coding stuff, so making art with code. And we've got a bunch of that up, out on Code pen. I mentioned we teach kids and in schools. So there's Zim Kids in school college. There's us. If you want to find out more about Sheridan, come to the Zim Learn section. Sheridan's renowned for its animation. And uh, we'd, I'd love to see in person. Wouldn't that just be wild? From around the world. People come from around the world. They come here. Um, so if you like this and have $7,000, or if you're international, maybe a little bit more, and want to take a year with us of, of uh, doing creative coding. So I teach interactive coding there, six unit course. We also have uh, UI UX involved in that, some experimental lab work with um, Arduinos and things, as well as a whole sort of web development side, okay? JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and various frameworks. Okay, as a one-year postgrad, so that's an excellent way to get you lots of skills. And like I said, it, wouldn't it be a, a blast to, to um, hang out? That would be wonderful. I am Dr. Abstract. Here at Zim, we were looking at the Texture Actives, and it's been a delight to have you here in this Zim Explore. Have a great day or night. Oh, why don't we just take that off for a sec? Come visit us, Discord or Slack, right up here, if you want to find out more or need any help. Cheers! All right, let's put it back on. Explore! Yeah.